25 minutes before 10 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. One of the things that we have a privilege of being exposed to, Robin, is some very talented people, and they're not just outside of town. We have some very talented people right here in town, and my goodness, talented in every way. We've had musicians in here that just blew us away. We've had mathematics students. Uh, I don't want to leave out the academic talents because they're certainly out there as well. And that would include literature. Connie Mann has been with us before. She is an awesome author. Did I say that right? Awesome author. <laughs> I got the New York accent. I got to watch. I appreciate the, that. Yeah, the aw- awesome <laughs> author. All right. And uh, the, her new book is called Angel Falls. And uh, you'll be able to uh, see Connie. Let's see. She's got a few things coming up. Uh, Gabriel's Christian Bookstore. She'll be doing a book signing over there on uh, the 23rd in three days from today. And, and then she's going to participate in the 2013 Book Feast. And I think that's how we kind of knew about all of these things that are going on right now locally with uh, our local authors. And that's April 13th at the uh, Marion County Public Library headquarters. Uh, Lee Schwartz told us about this just the other day. Uh, and Connie, by the way, I know you don't do this anymore, Robin told me, but you used to be a boat captain. I still am a boat oh, captain. Oh, you still are a boat yes. captain. Yes. All right. Uh-huh. So the prettiest boat captain over at Silver Springs. Is that going to go away, by the way, when they change over? Or is that going to stay around? Well, um, they say that there's still going to be glass-bottom boats at oh, Silver Springs. Good. But I don't work for them anymore. Um, I work for the Silver River Museum, which ah. is part of Marion County Schools. Okay. So I'm still a boat captain, just <laughs> for a different company. Oh. <laughs> well, well, good morning. Thank you for being in here. And uh, Thank you, how, What book is this? How many have you written now? Uh, this is my second novel. Your second um, novel. I wrote a parenting book as well. Uh-huh. And way back in the day when it used to be called Moms and Dads Magazine, I worked for them. Uh-huh. I was the editor for a while. Now it's Family Times. That's right. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I've I've been doing some writing for a while. So a while. But, but have you written like all of your life or was this something that kicked in? And I mean, obviously the be- being published is relatively new. Uh Right. Being published takes forever in a day. <laughs> this book, Angel Falls... <laughs> well, you Falls, made it. You, you made it. Yeah, it took 10 years for wow. Angel Falls. Um, so this is... V- I'm very excited that it is finally, finally, finally available. Well, that same thing happens to musical people, too. They'll yes. take forever to get their first album out, and then those songs are, like, awesome, because they've had 10 years to put them... or 20 years to put them together. Uh, it's, it's the follow-up that's the hard one to do, right? So... Uh, Here's hoping. <laughs> but in your case, you probably have boxes and boxes of ideas somewhere, right? I do. Uh, okay. I do. Yeah, I have a follow-up ready for this one. If, if anybody's interested in having that, then it's already ready to go. So, <laughs> so we'll see. I'm excited about it. So uh, the, the book is called Angel Falls, and you're telling us off the air that the, the waterfall is on the cover, and we were looking at the movie trailer. Your son made the movie, uh, the book trailer, I'm book sorry. Book trailer, yes. It's sort of like a movie trailer, so, right? Sort of, yeah. Yeah. Iguazu Falls is actually what that is. And where is um, that? That is on the border between Brazil and Argentina. Oh, okay. And it is one of the largest waterfalls in the world. Did it you makes, go there? Yes. It makes Niagara look like really? a mud puddle by comparison. Yeah. Really? Wow. And one of the things that happened, it was really cool. We were out there, and you can go to see it from both sides. And so from the Argentine side, we were there. They have catwalks that are directly over the falls. So you're you're on these catwalks, you're soaked to the skin, you've wow. got these slippery railings you're hanging on to, and wow. as you're slip sliding along, the concrete slabs are sort of bumping <laughs> up and down as you're going, and oh, the water's wow. dropping underneath oh. you, and you're thinking, what am I doing? <laughs> so being an author, I thought, ooh, this has to be in a book. <laughs> this has to be oh, wow. a big scene in a book. It and wasn't it, just a it scene, is. though. It, it's the title of the book. Well, it's called Iguasu, and that makes a terrible book title. You know, nobody can pronounce it, but in the story, it ties in together. Okay. With the whole idea of falling, and with um, the heroine is called, um, it's Angel F- um, House of Angels Orphanage, and the heroine's name. So it's all tied together into the book title. Now you said the book was ten years in the making. Yes. Was the storyline in the book ten years in the making, or, or d- help us understand that a little bit more? I started writing the book. Um, Ten years ago. Based on the visit to the waterfalls? Based on the visit. Based on, not just that, but based on, um, my father's from there. And he's from Porto Alegre, which is a city in southern Brazil. Okay. And for many years, they had a horrible issue with street children. It was heartbreaking. There was just, inflation was terrible. Families couldn't feed the kids, and they ended up on the streets. Oh, my goodness. And so I thought, oh, wow. What if you were one of these kids? What if you're six years old, dad drops you off and says... Sorry, honey, can't take care of you oh, anymore. Oh, my goodness. What are you going to do? You know, how are you going to survive? What What will you do? Who will you become when you grow up? That became the heroine of this story, is who she becomes. She becomes the director of an orphanage trying to rescue other street children. And so that is how 
that visit to my dad's hometown is what inspired the whole book. And so that and the wow. waterfall and all of that became the, the fodder sort of for the imagination to create a story. I'm guessing it's a double meaning, wa- uh, Angel Falls. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Yep. Tri- be triple meaning, maybe? Possibly. Maybe Readers will have to decide that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think I kind of can kind of see into your, your thinking process here that you've, you, you, you must have been in that trip and with exposure to those circumstances, the waterfall and the children, uh, something was happening in you. I, I, I mean, do you, yeah. do you think so? I think so. And I think underneath, I mean, it's an, it's an adventure story. A friend of mine just finished it, said it reminded her of Romancing the Stone from way back, that kind of... But underneath all the fun stuff that's going on in the adventure is this idea that there's hope, there's healing. If you come from a really tough background, you don't have to right. stay stuck there. Happy ending? Oh, absolutely. I love happy endings. <laughs> <laughs> and you have to be proficient at not just the descriptiveness so the reader gets their own image in their mind of what you're trying to portray, but the dialogue as well. You have to really immerse yourself into the dialogue of the different characters in mm-hmm. the different ages. Mm-hmm. And my Portuguese is sort of non-existent. I mean, I know phrases I can understand more than I can speak, so I have... My sister-in-law was very gracious to take all the Portuguese references in there and make sure I got them right. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so nice. Oh, oh really? <laughs> so I appreciate it, it, is, it. And this is just my naivety asking this question, but does somebody who speaks Spanish, can they understand Portuguese, or is it so different? It sounds, to American ears, like it's the same language. But Yeah, it's, it's different, but I know more Spanish than I do Portuguese. Okay. So when I was there, I could follow a conversation, but I had very little to contribute. <laughs> but oh, I, I could sort you. of I follow. You. It's yeah, similar yeah. enough that if you speak one you can follow sort of now let me go back to the friend who finished the book who compared it to romancing the stone just what is your reaction to that does that is that like good or bad like a lot of, it's like come on i didn't copy anybody it's 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 li- unlike everything right i mean well it's I understand. No, I don't think it's a bad thing because it gives people sort of a handle to put it onto to say okay guess, in my yeah. mind if i'm looking for something to compare it to that either I liked a lot or I didn't, if somebody says it's kind of like this story, then I go, oh, okay, I like that one, so chances are I'll like this one. So it gives people a way to wrap their minds around where it belongs, now, so to speak. In, in my notes, Connie, it says it's a Christian romance fiction novel of suspense. Explain that <laughs> genre. <laughs> it means it's not Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> <laughs> Hmm. Okay, I mean it, it's a romance, right, right. but it's not going to have ste- steamy sex in it. Okay, mm-hmm. but but the romantic part didn't show up at all in your description of the story. You you were telling us about this, mm-hmm. uh, but these children who have an orphanage, but somebody falls in love. Is it she? Is yes. It, is it the main girl? Yes. Okay. The heroine okay. does. She needed a real special hero. Um, somebody who's as tough as she is. She still carries a switchblade, just in case. Uh-huh. Nice. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. So she's tough. Um, so she needed a tough hero. So um, my hero is a former army ranger. I have the utmost respect for our military. And I was able to talk to a good friend who was an army ranger and said, what would happen if a ranger failed at his mission? He's like, we're not programmed for that. And I said, well, how would you deal with it? And so that was part of what my hero is struggling with is failure when that was not an option for him. So he's got some things to get past, too. Mm-hmm. So the oh between wow. them. So in the middle of all the adventure and protecting this baby and being on the run, these two also have some stuff to get past before either uh-huh. one of them can move forward. Oh wow. And now how do you get yourself, your heart and soul, into the heart and soul of a... Uh, little child who has been abandoned on the street because you've had a totally different upbringing more secure we hope yes i did thankfully um that's part of what all writers do is in the sense that you borrow emotions so to speak you think about put yourself in that position and then think about how you would feel about that and Mm. then borrow some other similar perhaps situations where you felt fear or afraid or well, those are kind of the same. But, you know, the the different emotions, you sort of incorporate them in so that you can live through that person's and see the world through that person's eyes. Well, Lee Schwartz had told us he had read the book, and he was really, really enthralled with it. He said, this is really incredible that you should be listed up, you know, as, as one of the <laughs> top ten New York oh. best-selling authors. Well, I appreciated that. Was I it? Did. Is it new? Is it just released? Yes, it just came out March 1st. Oh, so, so. It, it could be there. I mean, it could make it to that point. 
Depends on how many people get them. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you think as a writer um, that you were at any kind of a disadvantage living in Ocala or any small town USA, or does it make a difference for writers, especially in today's internet age? I don't think it makes a difference at all. The publisher of this book is in Nashville. You I know, mean, Marjorie Kinnon Rowling's in the day before internet was just up the road. So. Exactly. Today it doesn't matter. Most things are, you know, everybody with social media. Uh, I'm right. doing an online launch party right now on Facebook. Oh, that's you know, cool. So I have people from all over the world that are participating in that. So the internet and social media has made taken down a lot of those kind of barriers. So where you live doesn't really matter so the, so much the, the girl who grew up or was left on the street Regina that's uh -huh. her name yep. do, we, do we get to meet her as a little girl or as an adult you meet her as an adult okay yep. but we learn what she went through correct do we okay. learn what the story was? I mean, what, do we go back into her? Do we go to ancestry.com? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, 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 no. No. So we don't. We don't find out why her, why she was on the street. We do, but not in great depth and gotcha. detail. But enough to know um, that comes out slowly throughout the story. And and is th I guess the reason I'm asking that is because I'm just curious. Is that tip is is her story typical of what is actually going on down there and probably elsewhere in the world? From the research I've done, they have worked very hard to improve that situation um, of what it was um, to the point where sometimes they were giving vouchers to parents uh, for food if they would keep their kids with them and send them to school kind of thing. They've been working very, very hard to try to solve that problem. But does it still happen? Yes. There and other places? Absolutely. Yeah. And that's what makes you extremely unique because since you are with the Silver River Museum and you drive the boat for the... Marion County school students, uh, you must get a lot of questions that you probably don't even expect the children to ask. Yeah, and I, as a boat captain, you know, part of what's fun about doing that is these are fifth graders. Some of them have never been on a boat. They live right here. They've never seen an alligator in the wild, different other critters. So you get to open up a whole new world for kids that they might otherwise not see. And that's the same with books. To me, a book is like a magic carpet. You get to go somewhere else, live somewhere else, have an adventure that you might not ever get to do. And, and in some ways, working for the museum is like that as well. You open up the kids' eyes to a world that is so uh, important and is right here in our backyard and so many of them have never seen. The museum is awesome, by the way. And not, not to deter from our conversation no, about the book. No, it is. But it is. But I, I, and I'm with you. How so many people in our community have never been to the Silver River State Museum? I try to get to people there d by telling about the big di the big uh, skeleton. Not, not the not the, not the, um, what not was it, Woolly Mammoth? Not the Mammoth. Not the Mammoth, but the other one, the big tall one that ran 70 miles an hour <laughs> and is 20 <laughs> feet tall <laughs> and, and climbed trees <laughs> and it lived here. Right. I it lived here. I always <laughs> tell people I'd be dead if that thing was around right now because I can't run seven miles an hour, <laughs> right. let alone 70. Right. It is, it is a, a gem that so many people and don't what, know what, about. what is that animal called? Oh, now. <laughs> oh, no, <Yeah>. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I figured you would know. I just drew a blank. <laughs> All right, now, now, now when, you, when you do the boat tours, this, I've often wondered this about the boat tours, and I actually am connecting it to the book here. Okay. Y you take new people out every time. You tell the same story to new people. So for us as spectators, this is cool. For you, you're telling the same joke, same story over and over and over again, right? Mm hmm Writing a book, though, new story, right? New story. I mean, obviously, it's a new story, but <laughs> but, but is it? I, I don't know. Is, does the writer in you? Is the writer in you tempted in those boat tours to make up something new? <laughs> <laughs> well, since we're See, part of the be. since we're part of the science curriculum, it's kind of important that I don't make up something new <laughs> on that part. But do I try to present things differently? Yes. And and I don't always do the talking on the boat tours. Um, we have staff that also does it depending on what day, how big the group is, whether they're split into multiple trips. So sometimes I do the talking, sometimes I don't. But I love being around children. So it's it's always, there's something new to see every trip. So every trip is different. So you don't get into a rut. Do you work on the weekends? No. No, okay. Too bad. Unless there's a special Because I was, I was going to get go in with you on a prank. <laughs> I, 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 I think on April Fool's Day I could dress up like a m monkey or something. Okay. And then you could just point me out and say that this this is the you know Jerome the monkey. I could do that. <laughs> and, I'm and I'm always out there. I would have fun doing that. <laughs> uh, uh, when you go for your book signing event this weekend at Gabriel's, you said you were with four other authors. How is that going to work for the people to come to? 
be an an individual entity who wants well, to Well, we you. thought it would be fun. These are ladies that I'm part of an informal critique group with. We're all professional writers, and so we get together for coffee and to keep up and talk, and we thought it would be fun because we all write different things to have different people there. So one of the ladies writes for stepmoms and step parenting materials, and the other one does devotionals and then there's me with fiction and so we have a whole wide variety of different topics so hopefully if people are walking in they can chat with us they can meet us and there's all kinds of different books available to them not just one type so we thought that might be a really fun way to do that when, when christian is used in the description of the genre of your book mm -hmm. does it mean that we we experience some a character's christianity or does it simply mean there's an absence of things that would violate my ethics or something like that um some of that depends on the publisher but generally there is an underlying christian theme but I mean in, in, your, in your book in this book there is definitely a underlying christian theme to it of the idea that our god is a god of second chances Hmm. And regardless of what your that. what your past and background is, there's hope for healing. There's hope for second chances. So That's the underlying theme of the story. So we relate, don't we? We relate to Regina. I hope so. She's, I think she so. is us, but we we weren't left on the street. We were right, and maybe we left ourselves on the the proverbial the or the metaphorical street, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. Because I don't think anybody gets through life without having things that they have to deal with. Hers are extreme, you know, but for most of us, n we don't get a free pass from trouble. Well, None of us do. You know, it's like that story, and I know you've probably heard it. It's the the parable, I guess, where you, you, you're you with Jesus, and you say, anything I can do for you, and he, and he says that to you, and you say, well, yeah, could I get a different cross? This one's too heavy. And he takes you into this room and says, sure, and you pick one out, and you you set yours aside, and you go looking for a better cross, and wow, these are big crosses in here. And then you pick one that you like. And you walk out, and Jesus says, I thought you wanted a better cross. Oh, this is a better one. Oh, that's the one you came in with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love that story. And so it's a great it's story. And because, you know, you look at people like, oh, I don't know, the Kennedys are a good example. You know, because they've got so much money and whatever, whatever we perceive them to have that some of us don't have. And then you hear about all these horrible stories they've gone through. Well, everybody has their burden. I, I've, right. s I've said this often, that if, if, I, if, if before we're born we make a deal with God, okay, I get a life, but I also have some baggage because i got to learn something while I'm down there, meaning here, mm -hmm. then at least he gave me ones I can handle. You know, that's how I look at it. Not always, not always so easy, but... It's true. I think we, you know, we're your everybody, nobody gets a pass. We all yeah. get stuff. And we were never promised that life was going to be easy or trouble-free. Right, right. What's great about God is that he promises to walk through it with us so that we're not by ourselves. And you had said earlier that this is also a book about hope. I mean, even if a child is born with the best parents ever, there's still some kind of uh, trials and tribulations. They go through their life, and that's how they're relatable to the children that don't have anything. And the children that don't have anything, and they get this inner courage to stand up to be something, they really have a huge heart and soul to do that just like the heroine in your story she has all of the children in the orphanage to deal with but she's got to make sure she's one-on-one -on -one with them telling them all that they mm -hmm. have hope and that they are special absolutely. and have something to give yeah. absolutely Con connie man is in the studio with us and uh, she is an author her book is called angel falls and uh, looking uh, by the way We've had Debbie Maycomer as a guest on our show over the phone. She's not been in the studio. And when we've had her, it, occur it occurs to us when we have certain guests that some of them are like superstars. Mm -hmm. Like there's a following out there. And oh, it, yeah. it's amazing how many people called for Debbie Maycomer. Like after the fact, or can I hear that r interview? Mm -hmm. And we do these interviews as podcasts as well. And that shows you the numbers. Mm -hmm. Her numbers are outstanding. You wouldn't believe how oh, yes. many people will listen to these type of interviews. So... Um, uh, you're in good company. She's she's given you a thumbs up for this. She did. I met her years ago. She is one of the most gracious ladies you'd ever want to meet. Well, you've met her. I mean, over the On phone. The phone yeah, but yeah, she yeah. is yeah. just fabulous. And yes, she took the time to read the book and give it her endorsement, which I appreciate so very much because she is a New York Times bestselling author and a lovely, lovely woman. By the, by the way, it's not a subtitle, but the back of the book 
says a one-liner that might describe it a little bit. Two lives collide in a deadly race to save an orphaned baby. The book is called Angel Falls. Connie Mann is our guest, and uh, you will be at Gabriel's Christian Bookstore on March 23rd, three days from today. That's Saturday, right? Correct. And uh, what time are you going to be there? 11 to 2. 11 to 2. And mm-hmm. then you're going to be at the 2013 Book Feast at the library on April 13th. Right now we have a caller, a listener calling in. Let me take that call. Uh, good morning. You're on the air with Connie Mann. Hey, this is Bruce. Uh, I just wanted to agree with you. Uh, there's one thing I'd like to ask is uh, the inheritance that we get from our parents and our grandparents. For instance, examples are uh, my parents were all inventors, invented the radiator and the, the, that you see uh, that he can run hot water through it. He invented the hardening of iron. My dad invented a draft furnace. My great-grandfather invented uh, a cover hauler and a lot of that. So I figured that the good Lord looked down there when I was conceived, and he said, well, I'm going to give him a spoonful of each of those, <laughs> and uh, uh, said, I'm going to see what he's going to do with it. So I'm going to hang up and wonder what you, you think about the good Lord uh, passing on the different uh, areas of our lives and to what we become, because so many people inherit so many good things and bad things but how we can correct them or we don't ever use them so i'll hang come. up now and that's, listen that's true <laughs> that's absolutely true we we get both and so we have to decide what we're going to do with them did, or not do with them did you know who that was that was bruce mozart the uh photographer oh yes i've met him before all the underwater photos yes and in, i and have met him uh, to to speak to what he just said, he invented the underwater camera. Yes, it? he did. So did your parents write? Did anybody in your background uh, write? No. Um, we've got some people that do some painting. My moms and grandma were big into crafty type things, okay. and I think my creativity took a different turn and went into writing. Uh-huh. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now tell me about your blog. You have a blog too, right? I do. I try to encourage, um, especially women dream chasers like myself, so it's called busywomenbigdreams.com is the blog that I write. So there's always the latest on what's going on and what I'm up to, and hopefully encouragement for wherever people are in their dream-chasing journey. And, and it's amazing, as, as many uh, self-help authors as are out there and you know, um, motivational speakers, that kind of thing, sometimes it takes a well-written novel with a good, solid message to actually make that same message more heard, or more, it resounds more, I think. I mean, how many, how many stories... In, in fact, that's speaking to uh, Christianity. That's why Jesus' message was so adhered to, because he told parables. He told parables, yes. We love stories. Yeah. And sometimes we're more willing to hear what we need to know right. through story than yeah. through any other way. And the Bruce brought up an extremely good point, is that a God gives you all of the talents that you adhere to during your life, and that your uh, parents and grandparents are inspirations mm-hmm. to go ahead and actually pursue your dream and don't let anybody dissuade you from doing that. Exactly. And I've been blessed with some very encouraging family who has been my greatest cheerleaders, and I appreciate that. And I, I'm always sad for people who don't have that. So part of what I try to do is be that cheerleader for other people if they don't have that, because we all need that. We need encouragement when we're trying you, to do things. We need it, definitely. But you also need tough love. Yes. If oh, yeah. You, and as a writer, you must know this. It, it happens all the time. A lot of times we'll get critiques that are either just simply plain nasty stuff or, yeah. <laughs> it's something that, it, it's, or it's something that makes us feel bad, but it resonates as true. Mm-hmm. And then you say, you know what? Maybe they're right, and I need to change that. Mm-hmm. It's a hard pill to swallow, it but is. you're better because of it. And as a writer, I'm sure this happens all the time, mm-hmm. where somebody might say to you, you know, maybe you should change this or that and you're kind of resistant to it reluctant but if it's constructive and probably said with love uh, it's probably hard to say yeah and that's one of the values of these ladies I'll be with on Saturday is we do critique each other's work so so we expect to hear that, and we want to know what makes it better, what isn't good about it. Well, see, How I'm can bad. I make it I'm stronger? Ba- I'm bad at those kind of gatherings because whenever Rob and I have participated in something like that, I don't give them five stars. So come <laughs> on, you have to have something bad to say. You can't be all ba- all good. I'm bad. I'm like, I want to tell, but you know, you're doing fine. You're doing okay. Mm-hmm. You know, but at the same time, yeah, a little critique sometimes will go a long way. It's actually the best 
contribution you can make to anybody who's, especially in the creative world. I mean, even the guy making pizza. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, you tell him, that's a pretty good pizza, but, and he hates, he hates that. Everything after that, but, you know. You yeah. Hate, so. And you have something extremely unique about you, Connie, is that you are able to relate to the uh, uh, little children and everybody in between that because you have to have some kind of love in your heart and your soul for your fellow humans to create a project like this and also to live each life day, day to day by inspiring others you are a truly unique individual well I, I appreciate you saying that I'm like anybody else do try to do the best you can try to make people you know not happy when you leave <laughs> so, yeah <laughs> Rather, rather nah. be somebody that encourages uh, others. That's my goal. So there's a book trailer that your son produced. Yes. And it's online. Go to YouTube and type in, this is how I found it, Angel Falls the Trailer or something like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, you gotta look for you got to look for Connie, though. So look. Angel Falls Connie Man trailer, I think is how it's okay. worded. Yeah. Okay. If you okay. put those two words together, it'll take you where you want to go. Uh, are we giving away one today or not? Yes. We, oh, we are. So mm -hmm. we have a copy. So I wasn't sure because I know that usually at the end of an interview, I do give the book away if I have it. Mm -hmm. But I know that we're holding on to one of them for the book. I brought yes. another one for you. What's it called? The Book <laughs> Feast, right? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. So for the listeners, we have a book. If you want it, call right now and uh, Connie will sign it. And I will. Okay. And uh, we'll, it's, it'll be waiting for you. And uh, you can also go meet Connie for a book signing of your own at Gabriel's Christian Book Store, store on Saturday from 11 a.m. till 2 p.m. And you can go on... Um, April 13th to the Marion County Public Library headquarters and they are having their 2013 book feast. She'll be with other authors that day. Lots of them. Mm, lots right. of them. So you got to look up <laughs> Connie in there. Uh, <laughs> Connie, thank you for coming in. Thank you so much for having me. I've enjoyed it so Go much. Go to the Silver River Museum and, and uh, look at that big skeleton and realize it could eat you. Absolutely. <laughs> when it was alive. <laughs> uh, Connie, thank you. Thank you. We'll take a little break and we'll be right back. We're listening to WOCA News Talk 1370. Ocala's source for what's happening in today's hottest up-to-date news and topics. Right now, somewhere in the world, there is a bear waking up from a long winter's hibernation. <laughs> Scientists are not 100% sure how a bear knows winter is over, but I think I may have an explanation.